Hi guys, Hogan here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Slider Pro add-on by Themify. There are three main differences between this and the standard slider. With the Slider Pro, you can add a call to action button, as you can see here, to each individual slide. And you can also add text on top of each individual slide, as well as an image, which I'm going to show you in this tutorial. And the best thing is that you're able to customize the transition effects for each of the elements. For example, the button here, when you switch over to the next slide, as you can see, it slides down smoothly like that, and that's the transition effect. And you can also customize the style and the font and the color of each individual element, which is really cool. So as you can see on Apple's website, they have a slider and they have a title and also a call to action here. And that is basically the same as our slider. And the reason why they have this is because it actually works. It helps them increase their user experience and ultimately drives more sales. So you don't want a website with a homepage slider, but with no call to action button, I think that would be a total waste of space. So to get started, what we'll need is we need the Slider Pro add-on from Themify and you can get this if you go to themify.me and you go to plugins and builder add-ons and then you can scroll down and Slider Pro is the first one. So just click on that and you can get that either for $10 or $39 for all the plugins or you can get the Master Club which I highly recommend because you actually get the all the themes all the add-ons, all the different plugins, for example, the post type builder and also the announcement bar, which you can check out and as, as well as the one year support and updates. And you can also use the coupon code Hogan for a discount. After you've bought your plugins or your membership, you can log into your dashboard and then download the file onto your computer. So this is the dashboard and we're going to download the file. So this one is the Slider Pro add-on. So just click on that and it automatically download. If you're using Mac and a Safari browser, it might automatically unzip. So you might need to recompress those files back into a zip file or you can use Google Chrome. After you've done that, we can go to our WordPress dashboard. So go to our dashboard and I'm gonna quickly show you how to install it. So you can go to plugins and then add new and then we can upload our plugin, choose the file and then select the file, slide it pro and then open and then install now. After a few seconds, you need to click activate on the left hand side here. I'm not going to install because I've already installed it. Now the Slider Pro module should actually appear in the Themify builder. So we're going to the page that we're going to edit and you can go to any page that you want to add it for. So I'm going to go to all pages and we're going to our home page. So I'm going to click on view and then I'm going to turn on the Themify Builder and then I'm going to show you how to set everything up. So as you can see, I've set everything up already here and I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm just going to drag this down here for the time being. Okay, so as you can see, you can drag it anywhere you like really easily and it should resize perfectly. I think we just need to refresh the page and then it will actually resize perfectly. So we're gonna not gonna do that now. So what you need to do is we need to add the Slider Pro module into the space here. Okay, so after you've added that in, I like to add an image in to actually check the size of the slider and then we're gonna crop the images in Photo, okay? So let's upload the file browse library and you can upload the files. It's already in my library here and for example, I want to upload this image here. This is the original image and it's two megabytes. That is why I want to edit the picture on Photo. We're gonna reduce the size, otherwise the website's gonna load really slow because it's such a huge file. And sometimes it doesn't actually crop properly into the slider and you might miss some parts. And yeah, so insert that file URL and click on save. And as you can see, you've got everything here now. So what I like to do is I like to use Jing, which is a screenshot and screencast software that you can add onto your desktop. To download that, you can go to techsmith.com forward slash Jing dot HTML, or you can actually just go to Google and type in Jing, okay? Now go back to your website, and I like to use this feature, the capture feature, and measure the size of that slider. I've already measured it and it is 
one one six zero times six ten okay so keep that in mind or write it down somewhere okay now what we need to do is go to photo.com and we're going to edit a image so click on edit and it will go to this page here and then what you need to do is upload that image that same image so click on open and then what you'll need to do is resize the image to a size which is not smaller than the dimensions that you have written down before so what I normally do is use percentages and I resize by percentage so for example I'm going to type in 50% and as you can see 1024 that is smaller than 1160 so you don't want it any smaller so let's just type in 60 percent and that's 1228 that's still a little bit bigger I like to make it more exact so I pick something like 57 I think that works and then also you are going to make sure you get to change it for the height of the image so make sure that's the same as well so everything balances out okay so now what you need to do is crop the image and set the image to 1160 and also the width to sorry the height to 610 and then just find out where you want to crop it I like it just just right there above the hat a little bit and click on apply now you can add specific filters it's up to you it's totally optional for example I want to add a soft glow okay and then to add that really cool text as you can see here I'm going to show you quickly how I do that so what I do is just type in the text summer ready and then make sure you drag this all across and drag it all across as well highlight that text and I like to change that color I like to change the color to something inside the actual image so it blends in really nicely so I normally just use this magic um, this tool here and then click on that okay so I've changed the color now we're going to change the font I like this font here Bebes new I think okay and then centerize that text and we're going to change this size to about 150 and then we're going to change the letter spacing to 3 now what you need to do is to clone the image okay so after you've cloned that select that text here and change that color to a white color and now what you want to do is to layer that white actually below the blue color so how to do that you need to click on layer and then click on this down button here so it moves down and now what you want to do is to just zoom in a little bit to help you move that text and actually I want this up a little bit more I think up here a little bit more and this white text let's move this up a little bit more as well and then you just layer it down like this so you can make it a little bit more perfect than me I'm just doing an example so that looks about okay so after you've done that make sure you get this blue color here and actually copy this to your clipboard because we're going to be using the same color for our button to so make sure that it all looks really professional and nicely designed okay so after you've done that then you can save it or you can play around with the filters or whatnot so we're going to save it and I'm just going to save it as high save it to your computer and let's just save it as bitch new and click on save and yes so after you've done that go back to your WordPress website and double click here and we're going to start to configure the settings so the slider pager is basically this thing here that's the slider pager and also you can change it to uh, below so it's, it's below the actual image or you can have no pager the pager design it means I'm just going to change it to square so you can see what it means and the advance auto advance to next slide is basically how many seconds until it changes to the next slide by itself so let's just set it to five seconds I'm just going to leave this empty now 
the slide layout we're going to change it to center aligned and the background type we're going to close delete that first and upload that image we had before so let's just upload that one and insert the file and then you can add a content image here so if you browse the library and you can add the file URL there and then insert and then I normally leave the slide heading blank and I add the actual text in here so I'm just going to write in text for example and then show you what it means so I'm going to change the slide text color to black maybe and the link color I'm just going to leave it as is the action button we're going to change that to shop now and for the link obviously you can add any link that you want to link to I'm just going to paste that in here and you can change the icon to whatever you want for this one I'm going to change it to a heart scroll down and I believe it's there and the color the color is the actual button text color so we're going to change that to white and we're going to go back to photo and get the color of that blue again because I want the same color for the button copy that and paste that in for the background of the button color now the slide transition this is the for the whole slide you can slide it to the top slide it to the bottom you can play around with those settings um, I'm going to just going to slide it to the top as an example I normally leave that duration as default you don't really need to change it but you can change it to one or two seconds depending on your needs and also you can change the transition effects for each of the individual elements for example the title the text the button and the content image so you can change from a variety of animations here so for example this is short from the top so basically whenever the slide transitions to the next slide it's going to go from the top I think and then this one is whenever it moves to the next slide it's going to you know uh, use this transition effect okay and just like that you can play around with those settings again and to add a new row then we can just center align it an image and upload the image I want I think this one here and then insert that file and then also you can add a content image and also text as well and can leave those empty and uh, the action button is going to be shop now the link just a random link and also I'm just going to get that same icon here so just copy that icon and paste it into here and the color of that button text will be white and the background I want it to be black and we can leave those as default and then the next one I'm going to add a YouTube video so what you need to do is just center align it click on video and get the video URL so just go here copy that URL and paste that in and then you can play around with those settings again add a button I'm going to leave those empty and then we're going to save okay so that's it so as you can see this is the content image you can add that in or you can add in whatever image you want and as you can see the text is here you might want to move the text around depending on your needs and I'll show you how to do that and also the button I'm going to show you how to move the button to anywhere that suits your needs okay so what we need to do is to just double click it um, before we do that actually this is the um, slider pager as you can see it's the square button now and now I really like the photo thumb one so you can select that one and to move the text around you can just basically um, Cop, uh, select that text and move it to the center or hit enter a few times and you know hit tab a few, uh, hit space a few times and just move it manually and then I'm going to delete that content image I don't want that there and then just click on save and as you can see you've moved the text around so you just play around with it and you'll probably move it to um, the right spot as you can see that's the um, button thumbnails I'm sorry that's the pager thumbnails and that looks really cool okay so I'm just gonna edit that and then I'm gonna leave it as square and also I want to show you this styling so you can change the styling on the back end you can change the title fonts and the sizes and also the text you can change that there and for the action button you can also change the fonts for example I'm gonna change it to coda and change the font size to maybe 16 pixels and then click on save and then it should change okay so as you can see it's changed now and that looks pretty good so that's really just up to you 
I'm just going to delete this for now and click on save. Obviously you can change the text sizes and all that in the text editor. And now I'm going to show you how to edit the button location. So what I like to do is copy that URL and paste in here and click it enter. Now what we need to do is just save this for now and close it. Okay, so as you can see that button is here already. That's because I've already added the code in already and I'm going to show you how to do it. So go back here and then right click and inspect the element. This basically just gets the location of that uh, button. So we're going to click on that and that's basically the location, the Pro Slider 5101. Copy that, Control C onto your clipboard and go back here and go to your customize and then custom CSS. So themify options, click on that. Scroll down to custom CSS. And as you can see, I've added it here. So for example, I'm just gonna paste it in. Okay, paste that in. Now I normally like to maximize it so I can see everything. And where is it? So there it is. Okay, so what I want you to do is to put these brackets and then hit enter once. It's squiggly brackets, okay? This is a open bracket. And then what you need to do is just hit space twice, type in margin, and then type in top, and then colon, space, 40%, and then semicolon, and then space twice again, margin, left, colon, 10%, semicolon, and then enter, and then close that bracket. Okay, now go and look at the button. So as you can see, the button is here now, and you can change the location of it just by editing the percentages. So you could do 10%, and the button is moved over here and you can do you know 20 percent and as you can see it just moves and change the left one so you can change that to 40 percent so it moves across so you can play around with those settings um, to make sure to move it exactly where you want but for me and this one here it's 40 percent i believe it is 40 percent top and margin left zero percent and then i just close that and i click on save and publish now you can do the same for the other buttons. You basically, what you need to do, click on that next slide and right click inspect elements and you get the location of this one. So that is the location. It is, the only difference is SP dash slide. It's number one. The other one was just a slide zero. So that's the only difference and you can move those around to your liking. So I'm gonna close that and close that so basically there you go and we're pretty much done and as you can see it's uh it fits anywhere you like you can move it around and it is responsive as well so when you resize the screen it resizes properly as well so if you want it to make it look like my website where it's sort of like the whole slider image what you can do is you can go to turn on the builder and then you can go to options and row width you can set that to full width and then click on save, close it, and then it should be full width. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure to leave it down below in the comment section. And if you like this video, make sure to thumbs up. Cheers.